and welcome to Go Your Way. I'm your host, Phoebe Go, and I am joined today by Danelle Fadigetti. Hey, Danelle. Hey, Phoebe. How's it going? Ah, oh, it's it's good. It's been such a long time since I caught, caught up with you. I know you've been on holidays, so um, yep. I'm I'm glad that we could do the Go Your Way series today and share some new and, and exciting perspectives from visionaries and leaders across the world. And we have a really awesome guest today, um, who's Stephen Coe from Avast. He's the global lead of the Red Team. Hey, Stephen. Hey, hey, great to be on your show. Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah you too. <laughs> um, so I got to ask though, global lead of the Red Team, what do you do? Right, so Avast is an antivirus technology company, so leaders in privacy and antivirus, anti-malware. So the Red Team is an offensive security team within Avast um, that looks after uh, Avast assets and products, meaning that we are a bunch of ethical hackers that will test and hack uh, Avast infrastructure, Avast products, to make sure that we find the faults, get them fixed before the real bad guys do. So, so the red team does, you know, pen testing, uh, red teaming, which I can talk a bit about a bit about more, uh, purple teaming, all those sort of uh, sort of offensive security uh, activities to make sure that, um, yeah, we we know where our weaknesses are and we get them fixed before you know it, it gets exposed out there. Oh, that's awesome. How exciting. And I love that you could say I'm a hacker by trade. <laughs> it's a good party trick, yeah. Yeah. So we've been talking a lot. Danell and I have been talking a lot about security. In fact, it's it's kind of one of those things uh, that comes up all the time. And in that construct of kind of cyber resilience, which is not like not just one aspect of security, but across your entire, you know, IT organization, your entire, um, the way that you operate and what you're thinking about, how you protect and recover from incidents as well. So I'd like to ask first, I mean, where does, where in your opinion, does cyber resilience start and end? <laughs> what does it look like? Sure. F from, from my perspective, look, cyber resilience is all about, um, the, the, the word resilience is key, right? So being resilient means uh, a number of things. One, you know what you have. So um, knowing thyself, meaning you know what you have in terms of systems and applications and, and where they are, is the first thing because you cannot secure what you don't know that you have. The next thing is, okay, now that you know what you have, you need some uh, situational awareness. So you need security monitoring, meaning you know who's knocking on the doors, who's trying to break in, who's trying to pick your locks. Uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. and um, because you know that's happening you can have, have a team of people to be uh, watching for those alerts so you know what you have you know what's happening to them and then from there you put in controls and measures in place so that um, uh, um, you, you can have those validated so you have uh, pen testing and red teaming and purple teaming to to test those controls to make sure that um, if the bad People do come and try and uh, open your windows and doors. You, you know the locks work and the alarms work. Um, so I think th those key things are there. And of course, from there, you have a number of things you can do to simulate these things. So cyber res resilience covering from your uh, application security to your infrastructure security. You can do tabletop exercises to to do what if scenarios. So what if uh, we get a ransomware hit? What if uh, everything goes? do my backup uh, routine and regiment uh, and disaster recovery programs that I work. So having those uh, in play is also really important for resilience. Yeah, Stephen, actually, I'm curious, you know, like, are there things for all the planning that you do, you know, and the penetration testing that you do, what are some of the things that may just take you off guard and like, you know, leave you uh, unprepared? Have you had any experiences like that, that you guys just weren't really quite prepared yeah, to, for. Be honest, to be honest, you know, I, I all the time, in fact, um, you know, I, I dare say most medium or even large organizations, when you have a, a pen testing or a red teaming engagement, you will always find surprises because, you know, um, no, no organization, not many are, are perfect. That You always find things you didn't know were there, that systems that were, you know, a bit of shadow IT, someone from 
some department finance marketing spins up a server, sets up a system, didn't tell anyone, and suddenly it's unpatched and being exposed. And so, and, and so that, that is the normal uh, course of things. So whenever you engage for pen testing or red teaming where you do have an objective-based you know, emulation, adversarial emulation, we call it. So you pretend to be the bad people and try and hack in. Um, you will find things that are not quite you know, locked and not quite secure. And hence, you have these exercises to find these um, before it gets, um, yeah, gets found by the real bad people. And just a, another question on that, what are the most obvious things that you've seen that, you know, as, as the red team, thinking like a bad guy, you go, you know, this is the first thing I'm going to check because, you know, my pass passwords are always, you know, password one, two, three. What, what else do you kind of come across, especially in enterprise IT and business, you know, environments that you go, those are gimmies? <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, you know, the people, um, first thing, People are normally the weakest link, and it's a bit of a cliche, but but it, but it's true. Um, so people tend to be, most people tend to want to be helpful, and and you know most people are nice and and want to to help. And so uh, the cyber criminals will use social engineering to try and get into you, and 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 by studying what you have in your you know your social media and LinkedIn and everything else, they get to know what you like, what you don't like, and what you do. And, and create a relationship somehow and, and, and try and, you know, get, get you through a phishing attack. So and social engineer you into getting access or, or, or um, giving up information. So certainly um, user education is so, so important. And you know, humans are one of the weakest links in that chain. And, of course, the thing that we, we see a lot and surprises us still is you know, um, these out-of-date software and, and unpatched systems and, and 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 weak credentials and passwords, as you say. So no no to no multi-factor authentication and passwords are weak, um, because unless you're targeted by you know state actors and uh, using super sophisticated tools, a lot of the breaches and hacks that you'll see if you Google for breaches and hacks are still quite common easy to fix things you know missing patches out of date software bad practices uh and or people being social through phishing uh through emails or, or other social media accounts so the big hacks aren't super uber you know zero day things because those things are expensive to buy so unless you want to spend a lot of money to buy those zero day exploits to hack an iphone 14 with the latest ios and, yeah. and, you know, it's, that happens, but, you know, in, in the common, it's easy, easy bugs and vulnerabilities that are being, being exploited. Mm, sure. And, and so I guess, you know, during some of the biggest, the easiest times to get those social engineering attacks is when you're going through major changes. So, you know, digital transformation, which is kind of a big catch-all term for any kind of major IT disruption in your organization trying to improve. What are some of those security considerations when a business is going through a digital transformation that they should be thinking about. Yeah, so Phoebe, this is a, a big area. So digital transformation, from you know, from a practical perspective, and, and our audience will will notice whether you're um, just moving a whole bunch of data into a cloud provider because you're now going hybrid, or you're uh, going through an, a merger and acquisition. Someone is buying you, and you now they're they're now on. on a, a, on a different cloud, on GCP or Azure or whatever, and you need to move things along. So, um, so that's one increasingly uh, common, and uh, and definitely complicates things because if you look at um, if you're a single vendor uh, or uh, on-prem uh, sort of security sort of infrastructure, and then you, you, you your seam and your your monitoring is all on-prem, suddenly, uh, and you've got a limited amount of people in your team. Uh, looking at the one screen, for example, and then you go to hybrid and you're going through this digital transformation of, of different data destinations, suddenly that footprint expands. So suddenly you've, and if you're multi-cloud, it's even worse, right? So suddenly you have to have a security policy, policy to say, okay, for GCP or Google Cloud Platform, you need this sort of security in place. For AWS, you need this in place. Uh, for Azure, you need this in place or IBM or whatever. And then and beyond that, then you need to implement security monitoring for each each of those environments so that your people can see security alerts, things bad things that happen, uh, unauthorized data, data, data access, uh, data losses. 
um, so suddenly your your suddenly your team of say five are looking at five different screens at the same time because you've got all these things happening. So so that complexity means you really need to optimize by by using sort of multi cloud consolidation you know, platform. So th there are things like um, uh, CASB or cloud application security brokers. So you you, you utilize yeah. these broker tools so that your team can have one pane of view across multi clouds. If you don't do that sort of thing, you, you you'll be lost in the noise, and you might as well have no monitoring because you don't you don't know what to react to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, oh, that's got to be yeah. No, I was gonna say that's got to be incredibly complex. I mean, just sort of if you look at the rate of change of environments, right? You know, like adoption of cloud resources. You know, keeping some stuff on prem. Like things are changing, moving around so quickly. Um, and so frequently that keeping tabs on what's going on in that environment from a security perspective has got to be incredibly complex. It, and, and it is. And um, obviously you can um, leverage the right services. So you can outsource. If you have a small team, you can outsource and, and use tools to, to different you know, security specialists, uh, you know, companies who can help you secure this. Now, I just I want to give an example. So to put it in perspective, I've seen quite a lot of these um, merger and acquisitions where, for example, you have a startup and you write this amazing software, you have a uh, hundred people in your team and your company's valued at a billion dollars, for example, you know, because it's, it's good market share to, you know, and, and it, it's, all, it's all looking good. Then as part of the process, uh, as part of the due diligence of the M&A, uh, a full security audit will happen, right? So external pen tests, internal pen tests, a source code review, code quality review, uh, uh, code architecture review. They will look at how you put, how you run your security inside. Have you been breached before? How you handle breaches if you've had? Um, and your your software is it um, is it secure? Is your secure development lifecycle is in place? Do you have security across all this? Is it well architected and there are no uh, heavy bugs and inefficiencies and for every bug they find uh, as part of this process, whether it's a code quality issue or a security issue, they will assign an effort for to fix that bug. So imagine if you have your product has 10 million lines of code, not uncommon, and you have um, you, you have and each one will cost uh, you know 20 minutes of, of person time to fix. That multiplies out. We've seen MNAs go from yeah, it's worth a, a billion dollars. Oh, we need to spend. 100 million to fix it because it's just such a bad state that's mm. a discount you get. so by by and tying back to what we said if you don't start with security from the beginning you know the shifting left we call it when application security and infrastructure security and securing your cloud and your and have a good backup regime and does disaster recovery if you don't do all that you value you lose value very quickly and in, in, if you were to be sold and, and even worse if you get hacked um, you look at the yahoo incident which i keep bringing back because you know they through because of that breach uh verizon was end up buying them for like 350 million dollars less then there was another 117 million dollar lawsuit uh, or Lawsuits. class action mm -hmm. that happened. so it's um security isn't optional or it's something you put after uh afterwards you, you have to start from the start otherwise um yeah money's at stake wow yeah it's it's serious yeah. and we see it we see it all the time as well in our in our customers going through these huge transformations and having to you know make the security across all of these environments easier just to understand so that they can be audited you know appropriately well Stephen, thank you. I, I wish we could spend more time talking to you because this is such a big topic, like yeah. you said, and, and we have, I have so many and more questions, um, but this is all the time we have time for. <laughs> no worries. It's been a pleasure, uh, Phoebe and Darnell. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, Stephen. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. See you later. <laughs> oh, Darnell, we could talk forever about security, but we don't have time. I know. We'll be back. There's so much there, so much to learn. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, keep keep watching the Go Your Way podcast videos because we are learning with you, and we are we'll have many more guests. So we'll see you next time on Go Your Way.